Hey kids, thanks for being here. Uh, this is going to be a minimally edited video and probably kind of long. I'm probably gonna be saying a lot of words, so if this one's not for you, no hard feelings. <laughs> I just want to uh, talk to you guys, give you some life updates, explain why you're not seeing as much content from me. And I do wanna address some of your questions at the end of this video. This is not exactly a Q&A, but there are some questions that are recurring and I figure I could kill, you know, 800 birds with one stone. So first things first, as you can tell by the title of the video, that currently, at this moment in my life, I am not exactly doing well. Shocking, I know, right? A YouTuber whose mental health is suffering? <laughs> Big shock. <laughs> well, that's the surprise of the century. I would say, if I had to like break it up into percentages, I would say half of it is totally personal and has nothing to do with, you know, this part of my life, but the other half is this part of my life. Uh, YouTube, this job, etc. cetera. Uh, disclaimer, I absolutely love my job. I asked for this job. Uh, this kind of thing is what I've dreamed of doing since I was a child. It's what I did as a child. So this isn't me complaining and being like, oh, this job is so hard, which I know people are gonna accuse me of, but it is literally just about my personal inability to keep up with this, my inability to take a break, and my inability to create what I wanna create. The most common comment I get is, what happened to this? What happened to that? Where are you? Why haven't we seen a video in two weeks? Why don't you post enough content? <laughs> Yada yada yada. So here's what's going on in a nutshell. Some of you, if you are creators yourself, will know this, but many of you won't know that every single platform on social media is quite vastly different. So we have YouTube, there's Facebook, TikTok, Instagram, Twitter. Is there more? I, I can't think straight. Every single platform differs from one another. And in order to maintain your success, in the industry, you have to appease audiences on all platforms, essentially. So while it sometimes seems to the viewer that I am like not posting a lot of content, it's, it is important to keep in mind that I am actually posting Facebook content to Facebook, YouTube content to YouTube, short form content to TikTok, and sometimes even short form content varies, meaning like what goes on TikTok might not work for YouTube shorts, vice versa. What works for YouTube shorts might not work as an Instagram reel, vice versa. And I also post to Patreon. I post vlogs, behind the scenes videos, cover songs, etc. So I am literally tapped out with how much content I am actually producing. If you only watch me here, you won't, you just won't see it. So that's the first thing I kind of wanted to explain, which brings me to my next point. I am technically Technically, a Facebook first creator, even though YouTube is my first love and this is where I really wanted things to like be successful and take off, I have had more success on Facebook, which doesn't mean really anything to you as like if you're viewing me here on YouTube, it doesn't change anything for you, it doesn't matter to you. The only reason I'm telling you that is so that you know it is important for me to also run that platform. It is literally 50% of my income, sometimes some months it's more. For the first few years, it was 80% before anything was happening here. On YouTube. So Facebook is very important for me to run my business, pay my employees, pay myself, etc. So I can't just slack off on that platform and devote all my time here. I am working on um, kind of, you know, melding, welding, is melding a word? <laughs> I'm working on sort of meshing the platforms together a little bit. I do content over on Facebook that has proven itself to not perform well here on YouTube, but I am now testing how my Facebook content performs as a YouTube short. So some of you may have noticed you're seeing more shorts from me these days and they are all taken from full Facebook videos. I know this is kind of like probably boring for you to hear, but I'm just trying to convey that I am constantly creating, constantly. There is never a, a break where I'm not creating. There's never a moment in time where I'm not thinking of the next thing I could do. And I know that it seems like that's not the case because I don't put out as much content as most creators that you probably watch. I would love to be one of those YouTubers that post Monday, Wednesday, Friday, every single week or, f oh gosh, what's Charlotte Dobre? You guys watch Charlotte Dobre? I met her at the Streamy Awards, very nice person. She posts every single day. <laughs> I would love to do it. I asked her how she did it. I didn't understand the answer. You as a viewer deserve that. You as a viewer deserve to watch somebody that you can rely on, who you know is gonna be there like every day at a certain time or every week at a certain time when you want your, you know, when it's time for you to wind down and have your entertainment. And after seven years of doing this, I, I don't 
know how to do it. I physically can't come up with ideas and execute them fast enough to get them out multiple times a week. I can't. And the biggest piece of advice that I get from everybody in my life is you need to do less editing. And to me, that is kind of like finding a restaurant that you really like with a chef that makes food exactly how you want it and the demand grows and the demand grows and he can't keep up with it so someone comes and tells him just make your food a little less good that doesn't that doesn't make logical sense to me because it's like people are here for this specific reason my audience likes the way i do this 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 and this and so it doesn't make sense to me to lower the quality of what i'm doing just to put out more content that would not be as good do you know what i'm saying the editing we do is is extensive even if it doesn't appear like it is to you for example a movie review, okay? I have to watch the movie a minimum of two times. I have to write out my entire script, write every joke, write my little notes for my editors, like insert this meme, insert this quote from this other movie. All of that is from me. There's been comments lately like, oh, you're fake now because you have editors. Like, <laughs> I trained my editors literally from nothing. They weren't video editors at all. I trained them. They work with me in the same building. I stand over their shoulder. I approve everything at the end and I write everything into the script. Hiring editors was to save time. It wasn't to put off all the creativity onto somebody else. But my editing is really extensive and therefore the projects take longer. Uh, a movie review, I've done one in a week, but realistically I need a month <laughs> to do one if you know if I don't want to work till nine o'clock 10 o'clock at night. So there's watching the movie, there's the script, there's shooting the talking head portion where I sit here, there's writing the green screen clips, there's editing the green screen clips, there's writing the ad, the ad read that usually has to go in. I have to do sponsored videos most of the time, especially with a movie review because everything is getting copyright claimed, which is a whole other, like I already feel tears welling up in my eyes thinking about copyright claims. <laughs> I'm not mentally stable enough right now to talk about that. So every ad is a piece of content. Every green screen scene is a piece of content. Every talking head is a piece of content. Every little side skit, all of these things that make that content so much better and take it to the next level and make it actually good and engaging and entertaining and creating what I want to create, it takes a lot of time. It takes a lot of creativity and I'm struggling right now. I'm drowning because I cannot do it fast enough. Definitely don't feel like crying right now, so maybe we should move on. I know there's gonna be a lot of you that are gonna be really loving in the comments. Anytime I've even touched on something like this, I hear the sweetest messages that are like, look, Take your time, take care of yourself. We'll be here when you're ready. You know, if you need to post once a month, that's fine. And I can't thank you enough for that. Those of you who are like that are literally the reason that this channel still exists. The problem is just from a business standpoint, I can't be that leisurely and I can't take my time. I can't take a month to, to make a movie review or a commentary video because there are people relying on me, not just my team. I have a manager, I have people that are part owners of my Facebook page that if I don't post, it affects them. There's the whole YouTube, uh, YouTube, <laughs> what? <laughs> There's the whole YouTube algorithm that I still have yet to figure out that's like, if you take a break, if you don't post, you're not, you know, ranked or whatever. They don't recommend you. I don't know how it works. So even though I know that so many of you are so understanding as my audience that the, the industry just isn't. Every single thing about this job comes down to me and my face and my voice and my personality. Nobody else can sit here and do this part for me. I can delegate as much as I can. You know, I have an assistant who handles my emails and talks to brands for me and Posh marks my clothes and helps find clips for the brew. I have editors that do kind of the basic color correcting, audio, removing silences, adding in everything from my script that I've written. My sister specifically helps me with the behind the scenes videos that are posted to Patreon. She gets the footage and she uploads it. Nick also helps me shoot. Nick handles all the taxes, the payroll, meetings with the accountant. There's a lot of things I can delegate, but at the end of the day, I can't delegate the part that is me, the creative part, the writing, the ideas, the performance, you know, being on and being entertaining or being funny or whatever. You, you can't delegate that to anybody else. All the decisions are ultimately me. Like my assistant can go back and forth with a brand negotiating a price or whatever, or terms of a brand deal, but ultimately I have to make a final decision. The ad reads have to be done authentically in my voice. You know, if I finish a video and I wanna take a few days, I can't. I gotta make sure the next one is thought of, 
written and ready and shot and ready to go so that I can keep my guys working and keep the algorithm going. I'm sorry for rambling, but I'm really just trying to stress to you how no matter what it looks like on the outside, somebody can be drowning on the other side. The creativity part is hard for me at this moment. I think because I'm having some struggles in my personal life, health stuff, I'm still like coming off of Ozempic and I think it affected me so much worse than I even realized even when back when I made that video. I don't know if it was the chemicals in it or if it was the disappointment from the fact that it didn't work or both, but I haven't quite mentally, I. I Let's be real, I've never been mentally great, but things have gotten considerably worse since I took that drug and it I feel like it's still in my system and it's still affecting me. And right now I'm struggling with creativity and that was a really long way of saying, I don't have any ideas currently. <laughs> I'm just being honest, I hate admitting that. Like I'm super, I'm embarrassed about it because creativity used to just flow out of me like lava. <laughs> But every now and then it's like I get writer's block or something. It's like there's so many trends and so much content all over the internet and so many things to talk about and so many roads I could take that I'm like overwhelmed and I, I feel like I can't do any of them. I am so thrilled to have given up beauty and switched to commentary. I really feel a lot stronger as a commentary channel as a commentary person. But what I miss about beauty is that nothing had to be written or scripted. I didn't have to really come up with ideas. It was just like, oh, I'm gonna review the next launch or I'm gonna do this tutorial or you know what I mean? It's still creative, but it's like a different part of your brain. So I'm currently in a struggle with that right now. I am also struggling a little bit more than I ever did in the past with the hateful comments. I don't know exactly what happened. I don't know if I've become more sensitive or if the comments have become meaner, but I think it's the latter. The first few years, mean comments were all the same. It was you're fat or you're not funny. Like the two things I've heard literally my whole life. So they rolled off me like nothing. And as time has progressed, they've really intensified and I'm genuinely surprised every single day at the amount of rage and anger that I am receiving from hundreds of strangers at a time. I don't mean to get all dark and deep with you guys, but I, I usually do anyway. But it reminds me, I'm getting the exact same identical feeling that I got as a little kid when I had this certain family member who would get enraged and angry with me and scream and then it was always like World War III at my house. And I remember as a little bitty kid thinking, like I'm a seven year old girl, how could a grown man have this much rage toward a little girl? The comments I'm getting on YouTube and Facebook <laughs> and sometimes even Instagram, are literally taking me back to that exact same state of like, how could you be this mad at me? Like, I'm a nice person. It's it's getting tiring for me to be in an industry where there are people creating content who are racist, who are who are literally convicted criminals, scamming their fans, like doing all of these terrible things. And I'm so amazed at how many viewers are still left to come for somebody like me who like literally, I don't even cuss in my videos. And I know, trust me, I know it shouldn't bother me. It shouldn't bother me, but it, uh, it is starting to. Sometimes it's a little bit scary. Sometimes I'll read a comment from a guy and it's like literally, it makes me wanna go make sure my doors are locked. Like it's just not a natural, normal thing that we were designed to deal with. And again, I chose this job. I actually never dreamed that people would be like that. I think I thought comments like that would be saved for people who were doing terrible things. So that's been weighing on me a little bit. I've had a pretty thick skin for seven years, but something's going on with me right now. I don't know. <laughs> okay, I feel a little calmer now to where the last thing I wanna to touch on before I answer your questions is the issue with copyright claims. Many of you are probably here for my movie reviews or my Member That series or any content where I am taking, I am using media that already exists and breaking it down, doing commentary on it, making fun of it, recreating it, or saying how much I like it. Either way, all of that is content that relies on third-party content, meaning media that already exists, like a movie or a show. And as I covered in the first part of this video, uh, movie reviews and Member That videos take an extensively long, long periodically time to create, to watch the movie, write the script, shoot the talk through, edit the talk through, add all the effects, overlay all the footage, speed up every single clip so that it won't get copyright claimed, do the green screen scenes, export, upload, thumbnail, description box, you know, film the ad that goes into it, edit the ad that goes into it. After all is said and done and 40, 50 hours have gone into a video, for it to immediately 
be blocked for copyright or to have the revenue claimed for copyright is weighing a toll on me. I know you guys love movie reviews and I love them too. I, I don't know what to do about this. <laughs> YouTube completely throws up their hands. They do not help you at all with false copyright claims. I had a lawyer. I paid a lawyer to help me fight copyright claims. His name's Pete Salsic. You can look him up. He goes by the screen lawyer because he literally deals with copyright. And he thoroughly investigated all of that and he told me, your movie reviews are 100% fair use according to you know section 107 of the United States Copyright Act and yet Lionsgate and Paramount and Disney and all these people will still claim my video and take all of the ad revenue from what I have created. It's not even like there's a system where they can just claim the parts I used. They'll claim my whole video even if the majority of the video is my own commentary. So that also has me at a bit of a loss, you know, because in the past if I was kind of like having a bit of a writer's block or I couldn't create something as fast as I wanted I could fall back onto a movie review and that is becoming more difficult. I don't want you guys to, f to panic because I'm still gonna do them. I actually have one I'm working on right now. It's Selena Gomez's uh, Cinderella movie. It's so bad. We're about halfway done with it. So movie reviews are still coming. I'm still gonna deal with all these consequences. I'm only telling you this so that you know why I don't pump them out the way you want me to. So thanks for uh, listening to that portion of my TED talk. Uh, let's answer some of your questions. Uh, these are from my Instagram story. Uh, you're welcome to follow me on Instagram for more updates. So one of the really common question was, will there be any more vlogs? So all of my vlogging now is done on Patreon. I know that that's kind of lame for you to hear as a viewer, but vlogs were hurting the overall health of my channel because the views were so drastically lower in comparison to commentary. That kind of tells YouTube like, oh, this isn't a good video. People aren't watching as long, etc. Then they don't push it out. And then overall you're your overall views come down, etc. So they were hurting my channel. So they are on Patreon. I did try starting a second channel, which brings me to my next most common question. What happened to Jamie in the Wild? So Jamie in the Wild still exists. I haven't deleted the channel or anything and I have intentions of posting there as soon as I can figure out <laughs> how to get my life together here on this channel. Jamie in the Wild was originally going to be a vlog channel and I got the bright idea to elevate it a little bit and make these very cinematic, higher quality vlogs. They're more like films, honestly. I set a bar and then I realized quite quickly, this is a little bit, I bit off more than I could chew. And now I'm not sure when I can get back to that. But also, despite the fact that there was literally nothing remotely controversial in any of those videos, it invited more nasty, hateful, angry comments. And it felt even more weird because I was showing my home. <laughs> and like my family members and friends and talking about really personal things. And so Jimmy in the Wild is in limbo. I'm so sorry. I know I kind of have like a reputation of, of starting things I can't finish and that's embarrassing because I don't want it to be that way. I fully had intentions and worked everything out in my brain to think like that channel was going to be great and be super successful, but it just started to feel a little bit intrusive. So like I said, I'm not getting rid of it. I, I want to revisit it. I just don't know the right solution yet. On a similar note, <laughs> the other most common question I was getting is when is going to be the next episode of The Brew? <sighs> okay, so The Brew was a project I was so excited about. I put so much into, you know, I hired an animator to do the intro. I hired a 3D artist to do the coffee shop. I hired a designer to make the Merch. I love the brew. It's totally inspired by the soup, which is a show I th still think about every day and I miss like crazy and I was so excited to like bring something like that back. It has been exponentially harder than I thought it would be, both to edit the videos and to find the clips every week from like reality shows and news and everything. Some weeks there was an abundance of them and we were laughing our butts off and I could come up with jokes like that. And the last few, like my assistant helps me find the clips and they're all in a spreadsheet. And half of them that I looked at, I, I just didn't feel would work. It has nothing to do with my assistant or Nick or my sister or anybody who helps me find this stuff. It's just sometimes they just don't exist. And like I told you guys in the beginning, everything comes down to me. And if I can't come up with something funny to say or like a joke to bounce off the top of it, that clip won't work. So there's been a lot of wasted time finding clips that I can't use. It's really hard to find things that are current. You know, sometimes there's been times where we found something hilarious because it was like right there at the top on the Discovery Plus 
homepage, but then we find out the show is six years old. So the brew, again, also, I don't want it to go away. I just don't know the solution. <laughs> I don't know what to do to fix it. Because the other problem is the editing, all of the green screen, you know, there's a green screen behind me, there's a green screen in the TV. Everything has to be resized to fit the TV. And then once I create the YouTube version, everything has to be resized and, and fit into a square for Facebook, which takes several more hours. So it's extensive. It's a lot. And I didn't think it would be. I have underestimated almost every single thing about this entire job. Uh, I feel like I'm rambling. I'm anticipating. I'm anticipating the comments that are like, what a snooze fest. All right, last question I want to take is how do you decompress from stressful situations? Seems kind of relevant. I think that's actually the problem is like, I could probably handle all of this stuff on my shoulders pretty easily if I knew the right coping mechanisms to de-stress. What I really want, what I want more than anything in the world is one day where I can stay in bed, not get ready, not put my makeup on, probably not shower, and like watch movies. I just want to be ugly for a day, I kid you not. <laughs> I have had pretty severe depression most of my life. Also anxiety that's just gotten worse every year that I've gotten older. I don't know the right coping mechanisms and maybe I won't, that's fine. Like I got three videos in the works that are coming. Half the people will not see this video and will be none the wiser that I'm even struggling with anything and I will continue with my life until I have like my every few years nervous breakdown that I've had since I was like five years old. And it's fine, right? We're all like this. <laughs> we just don't all see each other's happening in real time on a screen. So, uh, okay, I'm rambling at this point. Thanks again for being here, for hearing me out. I know it's kind of taboo for a creator to like be vulnerable, talk about their personal life and talk about behind the scenes stuff. It takes away from the whole illusion of, you know, entertainment, but I, this is who I am, I overshare. <laughs> so I will see you soon. Again, if you're missing my content here on YouTube, I am posting shorts almost every day. I post new stuff to Facebook quite often and I post to TikTok and Instagram and Twitter. You can always find me somewhere. I don't ever just go away. Look out for the Selena Gomez Cinderella movie review and I'll see you guys next time. Bye.